It's been a hot minute since the moon landing, but India is in the race to cement its name as one of the greatest nations to do so. Hey there, and welcome to another exciting episode of Future Arc. Today, we're diving into something incredible. India's Chandrayaan 3's landing on the moon. It entered the moon's uncharted territory, and our knowledge about Earth's satellite will change for good. While sending humans on there hasn't been a piece of cake, robots are a different story. With their visionary minds and decades of stellar research in the field of space, India has officially joined the ranks of elite lunar explorers. Now they're rubbing shoulders with an exclusive league of countries that have mastered the art of delicate lunar landings such as the USA, the former Soviet Union, and China. So are you just as puzzled as how India nailed the moon landing? Well, stick around as we dissect this historic moment that we've just witnessed. But first, let's take a trip back in time. Before India was able to flex its power, it did go through a handful of hiccups. Let's journey back to 2008 and explore the captivating story of Chandrayaan-1, India's very first mission to the moon. On October the 22nd, 2008, a remarkable event took place at Shriharikota spaceport in Andhra Pradesh. Chandrayaan-1, India's lunar mission, was launched into space. Imagine this spacecraft as a space detective armed with 11 scientific tools from various countries including India, the USA, the UK, Germany, Sweden, and Bulgaria. Chandrayaan-1's job was to orbit the moon at a height of 100 kilometers and use its instruments to map the moon's chemistry, minerals, and geology. Like a cosmic explorer, it circled our celestial neighbor, collecting valuable data. On November the 14th, 2008, Chandrayaan-1's journey got even more exciting. A special part of the mission called the Moon Impactor Probe, also known as MIP, decided to pay a visit to the lunar surface. The MIP was programmed to crash land on purpose near the south pole of the moon. After completing its initial objectives, Chandrayaan-1 wasn't done yet. In May 2009, its orbit was raised to 200 kilometers, giving it a new perspective of the moon. Sadly, every adventure has its challenges. Chandrayaan-1's communication link was lost on August the 29th, 2009, cutting its mission short. In 2019, another brave attempt was made. The Chandrayaan-2 mission was afoot, but the mission ended when mission managers lost contact with the lander. This happened mere seconds before touchdown, and it was just two kilometers from the moon's surface. The lander, which would have made India the fourth nation to land on the moon, was thought to have been lost. The cheers and smiles disappeared from everyone's faces within the Indian Space Research Organization's Mission Control Center, even Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who was present. But to him, failure was simply part of the game and great things were in store for India. But hold on to your hats, because Chandrayaan's moon landing is one for the books. We're talking about the fear of not having a crash landing, or how spooky the South Pole is and what secrets it hides. Every scientist is on high alert as to what discoveries are in store for them. The moon's mysteries will finally be unveiled, and we've got India to thank for that. Speaking of a treasure chest of secrets, what about the South Pole inspires such curiosity? Well, the ISRO scientists have long been trying to learn more about the moon. A core objective of Chandrayaan-3 is to uncover the presence of water-based ice, a discovery that could potentially give way to a bright lunar exploration and even habitation. Scientists are dead certain that this water could be used not only for sustaining human life, but also as fuel for ambitious missions to Mars and beyond. You'll be surprised to learn that there is a connection between India's missions so far. Remember Chandrayaan-1? Well, it did more than just float around in space. Chandrayaan-1's journey had an unexpected surprise in store. In 2009, a special instrument from NASA that was on board the spacecraft made a groundbreaking discovery. It detected water on the moon's surface. This discovery amazed the world and added a new layer of mystery to our closest celestial neighbor. Chandrayaan-1 might have faced challenges, but its legacy lived on. Now, Chandrayaan-3 is following its predecessor's footsteps. But the wonder of lunar water doesn't stop there. Scientists are thrilled about the possibility of using it for research. Water on the moon can tell us tales of its past, like lunar volcanoes and asteroid impacts. It's like having a time capsule of the moon's geological history. 
Plus, water ice signals are mostly found in the poles, giving them a special spotlight. The lunar south pole has its own special lighting setup. The sun's rays only hit the elevated peaks, leaving the lower areas in shadowy darkness. These dark corners are known as permanently shadowed regions. They're incredibly cold, even colder than Pluto. But guess what? This freezing cold is the perfect condition for preserving water ice. And get this, water molecules entering permanently shadowed regions instantly freeze and are trapped there. It's so chilly that they can't escape as vapor. This frozen water collects and mingles with the lunar soil, creating pockets of water and soil goodness. So if you're picturing mini lunar icebergs, you're not far off. In 2020, thanks to NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, also known as the SOFIA telescope, the water mystery was finally solved. Vague water detection at the lunar south pole confirmed the treasure trove. Experts estimate that there could be around 12 ounces of water for every cubic meter of lunar soil. That's a lot of hydration potential. When you add up Chandrayaan-1 and NASA's data, a whopping 600 million tons of water ice lie at the lunar poles. That's equivalent to filling around 240,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And it's just a starting point. But hold on, it wasn't just a case of third time the lucky charm, no sir. After Chandrayaan 2's unlucky landing, a lot of work was needed to avoid the same mistakes. Imagine trying to parallel park on a rocky, sloped hill in pitch darkness. That's what landing near the lunar south pole feels like. It's not just a stroll in the moonlight, it's a tricky dance with the unknown. During the Chandrayaan 2's mission, as the spacecraft Vikram was descending to the moon's surface, something went wrong. Mission Control lost contact with it, and it's believed that Vikram might have deviated from its planned path. Similar problems were faced by other missions. For instance, the Israeli lander, Berashit, also had communication issues during its landing attempt. But these mishaps are inevitable because of the daunting nature of the target area. The moon's south pole region is an extremely rugged terrain, riddled with craters and boulders. Even on well-lit moon zones, a boulder-sized bump can ruin the whole mission. Now add a dash of lunar shadows to the mix, that's like navigating your way through a dimly lit room full of furniture in the dark. ISRO scientists revealed that they left no stone unturned to ensure that the mistakes of Chandrayaan-2 were not repeated. S. Somnath, the chairman of ISRO, revealed that four long years were spent working on refining their method and conducting tons of experiments to promise their nation a flawless ending. They formed a failure analysis committee, a bunch of space detectives who dug deep into what went wrong and how to make it right. They pored over the data, played some cosmic Sherlock Holmes and gathered all the clues. Once they had a solid grip on what needed fixing, they jotted down their findings in a report. It was like mapping out a treasure hunt for the solutions to those pesky problems. Then came the grand move. They used that report as their treasure map. The changes and fixes recommended in that report became the golden rules for crafting Chandrayaan 3. It's like taking the lessons learned from a tough video game level and using them to conquer the next one. So armed with new insights, Chandrayaan 3 was born. And let's just say the rest is history. In short, the lunar south pole is a mystery wrapped in a chill. Temperatures there can make Antarctica look like a beach vacation. Plus, some areas never see the sun, a real challenge for solar-powered rovers. But Chandrayaan-3 was ready for this chilly rendezvous, equipped to withstand the freeze. To think that 15 years since Chandrayaan-1's launch, India has made such great leaps in advancements shows they're not to be underestimated. They're already making crazy plans to study the sun. From solar to lunar researchers, India's changing the game. So if you want to stick around and keep tabs on what ISRO is up to, leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.